Welcome back guys to some ukulele. Now the point of this video is going to be the usual. I'm gonna go over a trailer. Now this time, at EGX 2016, this huge gaming event in the UK, they showed a brand new ukulele trailer. When I first heard about EGX, apart from the demos, I told myself we might not get a brand new trailer, but I was wrong. It's pretty cool that they did so, I wasn't expecting it at all. Now for this trailer, nothing major, nothing new was shown, well, except for this one very unexpected thing. But in Anyways, the point of the trailer was to go over characters, I mean the title itself says Character Parade. So there you have it folks. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Alright, so the trailer starts off with Yuka and Lily in Shipwreck Creek. Now this scene right here guys, it is simply adorable. I'm guessing that once the player remains idle, this is what they'll see. However, it looks zoomed in, I think this was purposely done for the trailer. Now about Shipwreck Creek, there are 5 worlds in this game, but Shipwreck Creek doesn't count as one of the 5. This world is going to act as an intro world, something like Spiral Mountain from Banjo Kazooie, and at a point we can see Hyvary Towers in the back from Shipwreck Creek, and at a point we notice the name of the ship, which is pretty funny, Bat Ship Crazy. Okay, in this scene in Shipwreck Creek, we have Yuka and Lily gliding. This ability is performed in a short amount of time. It's very limited. Now, as for flying, a flying ability is available, but it consumes power. For a very brief moment, guys, we notice a minion. That means there's going to be enemies in the intro world, just like Spiral Mountain from Banjo Kazooie. Next, the trailer moves on to Capital B and his minions inside his factory. About his staff, I know he's a bee, but the honeycomb shape really reminds me of Banjo Kazooie. As a kid, I used to play Kazooie and Tui a lot, and it's nostalgia I guess. And this scene, it appears to be a cutscene. Next, we move on to Trouser the snake. Oh no, he's not a snake, he's a serpent. Whoever came up with this name, it's funny, good job. Now Trouser is in Tribal Stack Tropics. Since we've seen this world a lot in trailers, I'm assuming this is the first world players will get to visit. As for Trouser's voice, we heard it in the E3 trailer. And according to Sutherland, from Platonic, if I remember correctly, he said that Trouser is actually a car salesperson, but in the game he's gonna sell us a bunch of abilities. Notice the minion with the hat on, they can wear outfits, and apparently it can boost their defense. Next, we notice Dr. Quack from very close for the very first time. We hear his voice, his voice kinda sounds like a duck I guess. About Quack, Quack and Dr. Puzz used to work together, Dr. Puzz is the character who's gonna transform Yuka and Lily throughout the game. When Capital B took over Quack Corporations, Quack decided to work for him I guess. But Dr. Puzz escaped and she didn't want to get involved, and she decided to help Yuka and Lily instead. And about Dr. Quack, I think he might be a secondary villain in the game. Maybe like a boss battle at some point in the game. Rextro64, we see him inside the arcade. We didn't see much of the arcade in the E3 trailer, but this time, we see more of it. In each world, there is going to be this huge arcade machine. And guess what? Old style multiplayer will be in the game. Remember when you used to sit on the couch with your friends and played multiplayer split screen on the TV? That's what it's going to be like. And these arcade machines support up to 4 players. And at one point, Platonic did mention co-op gameplay. I don't know if that's in the actual gameplay in the game or in these arcade machines. I'm going to assume that co-op gameplay is inside the arcade machines. Now judging by the walls, judging by the bricks and the honeycombs, I think this one's inside the last level in Highbury Towers. Now, now in Banjo Kazooie, Gruntilda's lair had a bunch of worlds, right? In the end, it acted as an actual world, but overall, in the game, it was this hub world. The same goes for Yuka and Lily. Dr. Puzz in the icy world. This world actually got a name very recently, if I'm not mistaken. It's called Glitter Glaze Glacier. Okay, 5 worlds in this game, right? Shipwreck Creek counts as a intro world. Tribal Stack Tropics, Glitter Glaze Glacier, that's 2 worlds out of 5. Oh no wait, there's Hyvary Towers, the last level, so that's 3 out of 5. So we're yet to see 2 worlds. I wonder what those will be like. Blasto the Cannon, yes, anything that has googly eyes on has a name in this game. Notice Hyvary Towers in the back, like I said in the beginning. In Shipwreck Creek, we notice this huge tower in the back. So Shipwreck Creek, I'm guessing, is going to be the intro world. Plus, we see Yukai and Lily ship so this is Shipwreck Creek. We see a treasure chest. Judging by the toy box version, there might be some quells inside, but quells are usually present in the actual worlds in the game. Shipwreck Creek will be a natural world, so maybe we might see another collectible in this chest, but who knows. Ground Smash to activate the cannon, and Ground Smash is apparently upgradable, according to the demo, according to Platonic Games. Next, Kartos, the God of War, and Lely calls him that. Guys, not only does Lely have this adorable voice, but her remarks. That's what I love about 
about her. Lily is this funny character, period. <laughs> okay, by collecting all gems, we get a pagey, but I'll talk about this more later. We see Yuka and Lily again. They look adorable. That's all I'm gonna say. Then we get this non playable character, Sir Leapalot. There's another medieval style character in the game who goes by the name Lady Leapalot, and I'm guessing she's in Tribal Stack Tropics. Nimble the Cloud, Skeleton Girl. Skeleton Girl actually has a name, it's Clara. Snowman. His scarf kind of reminds me of Gruntilda's. I don't know if you guys think the same, but anyways. Furnace. Like I said, guys, anything that has googly eyes on, they talk. It talks. Judging by its surroundings, I'm guessing this furnace is in Glitter Glaze Glacier. Now we move on to the thing that's very unexpected. Okay, no, wait. Right before that, we see a page in a coffin. Lily will have to use her sonar ability to unlock that chest. There's going to be these small statues in the game, throughout the game, everywhere, in each world. And by applying Lily's sonar ability, they all do something. Like I said in the beginning, there's this huge arcade machine in every single game. We notice it in the back this time. And the world, guys, it looks pretty huge and beautiful. A lot of people are worried that the game might be too short, but look, guys, it's pretty huge and they're expandable, so I'm not worried. You can slightly notice the cloud which will race Yuka and Lily in the game. It's this pink cloud. And this one goes by the name Nimble. So the white cloud's name is Nimbo, and this one's name is Nimble. And about this race, there's actually something very very interesting about the racetrack. I'll talk about it later. Now, we move on to the thing that was very unexpected. Shovel Knight. The game Shovel Knight was this indie game which had a very successful Kickstarter back then. It's a 2D side-scrolling game developed and published by Yacht Club. This character, Shovel Knight, actually appeared in many other games as well. For example, Runbow on the Wii U, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which hasn't been released yet. There's a big list, guys. Pretty much, Shovel Knight is this popular character in indie games. I don't know about you, guys. So far, Shovel Knight has the most funniest voice in the game. Yo ho ho yo yo. <laughs> when I heard that, I kept laughing. And everything that has to do with Shovel Knight in this game, it's been done by Yacht Club. We've never seen Shovel Knight in 3D, so here he is. Plus, for those of you who are wondering about his voice, this is it. Yo ho yo. Okay, now since Shovel Knight is going to appear in the game, some of you might ask, what about Banjo-Kazooie? The thing is, Banjo-Kazooie is owned by Micro. Microsoft. If Platonic Games were to decide to make some sort of crossover with Banjo-Kazooie or anything like that, they would have to contact Microsoft first. So no, everything Banjo-Kazooie is currently owned by another company. Maybe they could make references, but the character itself appearing in the game, it's not possible for now. Now we move on to a 25 minutes gameplay, I'm gonna go over it completely. No, I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna show the whole thing, I'm just gonna go over stuff that's pretty much new, stuff we haven't noticed before. Okay, so at EGX, this huge gaming event in the UK, there were playable demos for the PlayStation 4 and PC. And according to Playtonic Games, the demo and the gameplays they showed at that event was the first belt for the PlayStation 4. For the PC version, I don't know, but for the PlayStation 4, it was the first time we ever see gameplay on that console. So, since it's the first belt, there's a bunch of stuff missing, according to Andy Robinson from Platonic Games. Okay, there's some stuff missing, but the game already looks amazing. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump right into it. Okay, the demo starts in Tribal Stack Tropics, the usual. Each world will have 200 quills, and the quills speak. Like I said, anything with googly eyes, it speaks. There's a bunch of abilities similar to Banjo and Kazooie. The ground smash, the high jump, I've said this many times, I think, in the other trailers. I think I did. Yuka's camouflage ability. We've seen this one for a very brief moment during one of the other trailers, and it uses power. Laylee's sonar ability also uses power. And Chris Sutherland is the one who came up with these moves. They're pretty interesting. Now we move on to the Ghost Rider. These guys right here, they remind me of the Jinjos. This one right here, the orange one, yellowish, it's a new one we haven't seen before. This one hides. Pretty simple. The other ones do other tricks. And if we collect all of them, I'm guessing we get a pagey. There's some butterflies flying around. They speak, apparently, without googly eyes on. So pretty much everything in this game speaks. Next, Next, we move on to the ice balls or the frost berries. I've read that in an article, if I'm not mistaken. That was a while ago. But anyways, you can use these ice balls to freeze the water. This will later be seen. You can also use it to please a ghost, one of the five ghosts. One actually likes to consume ice, and that's how we capture it. And the animation, guys. I know I've said this 50 times, but it reminds me of the Jinjos. The world, the whole environment looks absolutely beautiful. Now, since the game has five worlds, some people are worried that the game might 
might be too short. But guys, look at the world, it looks massive, we should expect a lot of gameplay and side missions. I understand, Banjo-Tooie has more worlds, but Ukulele is all about exploration. The world, like I said many times, is pretty huge, there's going to be a lot of hidden areas, a lot of extra missions, a lot of non-playable characters. Okay, back to the butterflies. The player will have two choices, either eat them to gain health or walk and collect them to increase the power meter. Next, sorry I don't talk to your kind. Yuka and Lily must transform, they must meet Dr. Puzz, and we'll see it later. Once they transform, they'll be able to communicate with this plant. Andy Robinson explains that the quills are used to purchase moves from Trouser, and they can be purchasable in any order. And apparently, the first ability in each world will be free. Like a tutorial move, I guess. About the expandable worlds. At first, every world will be very basic, pretty much small and easy to understand. When they're all expanded, there's going to be more areas to visit. Notice the tall structure, we can climb our way up there. So pretty much, all of these large structures we notice in the back, they are explorable, we're not talking about visuals or decorations. When the world is not expanded, that huge structure will not be there. But, there's going to be something there that's going to hint us towards the fact that the world is expandable. Now during this gameplay, it looks like they are starting from the beginning, right? Then how come do we see the structure? Well, they expanded the worlds just for this build. To expand these worlds, we'll have to use pages, that's the main collectible in the game. Not only can we expand worlds using pages, but we can use them to unlock worlds as well. So the player has some decisions to make. Pages are found and gained by completing challenges, by helping non-playable characters. Pretty simple, right? Next, we see a statue, like I said in the beginning. When Laylee performs her sonar ability on this statue, it activates a bunch of stuff. In this scene right here, we notice a platform activating. Molly cool. We need to collect this item and give it to Dr. Puzz. She'll use that to transform Yuka and Laylee. The names in this game, right? <laughs> now, we have a full conversation with Dr. Puzz. She explains the whole situation with Dr. Quack. About her design, she was designed by Ed Bryan, who also designed Mumbo Jumbo from Banjo-Kazooie. Notice this skull on her shirt. That's a reference right there. Once Yuka and Lily transform into this plant, they can finally communicate with the other plant. Now, this plant asks Yuka and Lily to help the other plants grow. Once the player does so, they'll get a reward. And I'm assuming it's a pagey. In this gameplay, Platonic didn't reveal what they get as a reward. They said it's considered spoilers. Could it be something else than a pagey? Maybe. When we're a plant, there's some small obstacles. There's boxes, we can form a bridge, and stuff like that. About our health, we have 6 health butterflies, and I'm assuming it's upgradable. We move on to Kartos, the god of war. We have to collect a total of 40 gems on the rail track to get a pagey. But, one thing I've noticed, there's more than 40 gems on the rail track. I think they could've made the game a bit more challenging if there were exactly 40 gems on the rail track. But anyways, this gameplay already looks a bit challenging, and I'm saying this because it will get a lot tougher later on in the game. And about the obstacles. We can jump, accelerate, and we have to be careful not to hit any barrels. And this gameplay reminds me of Donkey Kong. So we're back to Laylee's comments. Gotta love Laylee, right? Does the old cart give me a rash? But anyways, here's an interesting info about the game, guys. At Kickstarter, the first 15 backers contributed to the game according to Sutherland. The page is one of them, some characters as well. Some of these backers recorded their own voices and they sent them to play Tonic. And the page is an example. Next, there's going to be a lot of switches in the game. They're gonna have many functions. One positions the bridge, one's gonna activate a bunch of doors, and stuff like that. We move on to another Ghost Rider, and this one attacks. Like I said before, all of the Ghost Riders will have their own tactics. Next, we move on to Nimble the Cloud. By giving it a splash berry or water ball, whatever you want to call it, the cloud produces water and fills up the riverbed with water. I really love those glowy effects on Yuka, it looks really nice. Now Sutherland mentioned that there's a special way of unlocking the next world. So Platonic at this point is making us guess, we don't know yet, maybe we might see it in the next trailer. The second world he's talking about, I think he's talking about Glitter Glaze Glacier, I mean we've seen that world already, so that could be it. Here's another cool thing about this river, when we give a frost berry to Nimbo, he freezes the whole river completely. About this riverbed, when it's dry, a non-playable character will challenge Yuka and Lily to a race, and I'm talking about Nimbo, the pink cloud. 
When the world has expanded, the player can meet Nimbo, the White Cloud, and freeze the river. Once the river is completely frozen, the player will go back to the Pink Cloud, and the Pink Cloud will challenge Yuka and Lily to a harder race. Now this race I'm talking about, it's not part of this build. Since we're going to be racing Nimbo more than once, I'm assuming we're going to get something different than a Pagey the second time around. Next, Robinson talks about the Tonic system. There's going to be a vending machine, a non-playable character who goes by the name Vendi. We've seen this a long time ago in this concept art. Now Vendi will sell you tonics. Tonics will be used to add perks, modify gameplay, make ground smash stronger for example, slow the power meter a bit, stuff like that. We can also breathe longer underwater to find secrets, hidden areas. So tonics will have a very important role in this game. About the switches, we move on to a switch which unlocks a crate. There's a pagey inside, and this cage is actually called KG. So we're talking about a pagey and a KG. Who else but Playtonic, right? Okay, this game will have a lot of challenges. For example, going through the rings. We have 14 seconds, and it looks quite challenging to be honest. <laughs> about the arcade machines, there's going to be one scattered in each world. There's apparently going to be 8 of them. Okay, if there are 5 worlds, and 8 arcade machines, is there going to be more than one in certain worlds? What do you guys think about that? And notice a small detail guys, we see the name of 5 players. Is that going to be a list of top 5 players? We'll find out one day, I guess. These small gameplays will be playable up to 4 players. Perhaps co-op. They said that co-op is in this game. And like I said earlier, it is going to be old school couch gameplay. Just like our childhood, right? Next, we move on to a ripped up pagey. To collect it, we have to collect the pieces that are scattered around. We must listen, and this reminds me of the Sly Cooper series. I don't know if any of you watching are familiar with that series. It pretty much reminds me of the clue bottles. Next, we have another hidden ghost. This time we have to listen and use Lady sonar ability. Once we do so, we can make the ghost appear and we capture it. The menu guys, look at the menu, it's pure nostalgia. About the ghost, some of the names have been revealed. The one that hides is called Heidi, the one that runs around, the one which we have to chase is called Avoidy, the one which hides and doesn't turn invisible is called Norm, and the one that hides, normally, Norm I guess, it calls out to you. We collect a pagey, the animation is just like the one of the ghosts. And there's music playing, about the music in this game. Grant Kirkhope is going to produce. He worked on Magic Kazooie, David Wise, he worked on Donkey Kong, and David Burke. They're all working on the soundtracks in this game. Next, when Yuka touches crates, he turns brownish silver, and it makes him invincible, like the one we saw in the E3 trailer when he turns all metal. Now the player is trying to move to the top of the monument, the top of the structure. We have to use the sonar ability to activate a platform. And once we're on top, there's this very mysterious collectible. Playtonic said that they're not gonna reveal it yet. It's spoiler, so we don't know what it is. But judging by the look, maybe this might increase the power meter? For the menu, I showed it for a very brief moment, but notice the stuff on the right. We have the molly cool, the quills, the play token. The play tokens will be used to unlock the arcade games. I'm guessing we give those tokens to Rextro 64s. The butterflies. Like I said, we can collect butterflies. And there's that secret collectible right there. According to Playtonic, they took a bunch of things out of this belt, simply to avoid spoilers. Half of the stuff got removed. If the game already looks this awesome with stuff missing, then the final product will pretty much be fantastic. About the minions, like I said, they can wear outfits, hats, pants, underwear, anything. And those pants actually, it's a joke. A lot of people were like, how come you guys not wearing any pants and stuff like that? But anyways, these pants right here on top of the minion's head boosts their defense. And on this monument right here, there is supposed to be a boss battle. Due to spoilers, they took it out. Clara. Again, Lily's remarks. More fleshed out character. Okay, so far, according to Sutherland, in the Nintendo Life interview, the Wii U version is still in the works. That's why we haven't seen a playable version of the Wii U at EGX. We only got PC and PS4. For the Nintendo NX? While Playtonic didn't say much, they simply said that they're focused on the current consoles. That's it. Now at some point at EGX, Playtonic Games came up on stage and they talked about ukulele. One of the fans asked one very interesting question, and it has to do with grabbing onto ledges. So far in the trailers, we haven't seen Yuka holding onto ledges. They tackled it in a different way. Apparently, if you're too close to the edge when you're about to fall off, the game will actually pull you back up. I don't know if you guys understand what I just said. If you're very close to falling off, the game will pull you back up. That's it. Now when it comes to grabbing onto ledges and moving from left to right, we haven't heard anything about that. If that feature isn't available in the game, well, 
I'm not gonna get disappointed, the gameplay already looks fantastic. For the release date of Ukulele, it's going to get released in the first quarter of 2017. We don't actually have a day and date release date, but it's going to get released eventually. Playtonic is doing their best to please as much fans as they can. So once they're ready for it, they'll give us an actual release date. But anyways guys, this is pretty much it for the video. If you watch the whole thing, you're pretty awesome. And as usual, if you have any thoughts and stuff like that, just simply leave them in the comments. Oh, before I forget, all of the stuff I included in this video, I will leave the link in the description so you guys can check it out. But anyways, as always, I've been Vivi and thanks for watching.